The Gila Segmiller Historic Farm located in Little Valley is one city park that the community can enjoy and use. Donated by the Segmiller family to the city of St. George, this unique park has been turned into a replica of the past to preserve heritage in the future. To, to teach the children where their food comes from, to um, provide green space, habitat. Plots of ground at the community gardens at the Segmiller farm can be rented out to the public to grow fruits and vegetables. So families that want to rent a plot, it's $70. Um, and they can come in and they can grow whatever they want. You already have your drip lines hooked up. I mean, it's really kind of a nice way to take care of that if you don't have space in your own yard or you, you feel like you don't really know how to grow. There's a lot of uh, community around this and these gorgeous, gorgeous sunflowers. Look at that. Chair of the Washington County Agriculture Committee, Nikki Hancock, grew up raising vegetables. She knows the importance of green space and the importance of growing your own food. We took a tour with Nikki to see what's growing inside. I think this is a fantastic example of what can actually be grown in southern Utah. While the corn here is not quite as high as an elephant's eye, these tomatoes are almost as tall as I am. And so when you look and you see how in really a relatively small place, there's so much that can be, that can be grown and provided for, um, there's just a lot of opportunities. Everything from lettuce, beans, cabbage to eggplants can be found growing in this garden plot. Look at that gorgeous little plant. So eggplants do incredibly well. These I can almost guarantee will be gigantic bushes and you'll probably get 30 or 40 eggplants off of There's each single one of these. Again. So look here, we can see the development of brand new baby squash. And you know, if you go to these fancy restaurants here, even harvesting, people talk about having way too much squash, right? Harvest them when they're young, they're tender. You, you go to fancy restaurants and they'll deep fly, fry the blossoms. Um, they're absolutely delicious. Um, you know, we have kind of a late onset this year with this cool, cool spring weather that we've had, but I see a whole bunch of baby cherry tomatoes just about ready to, to pop. Little baby watermelons, look at these. Look at these gorgeous, miraculous little curly Q plants here. These are little baby watermelons right there. Hancock says that younger vegetable plants usually taste better and can provide multiple cuttings per season. Look at that gorgeous salad mix that you've got right there. If you just came and gave those guys a haircut every other week, I mean, so, so beautiful, so fantastic. What's happening right here? Look at those. See, that's about the size that I like to harvest them. They, they haven't gotten too tough yet. Um, they're just easy to, and I throw them in everything. I even Microgreens are 100 times more nutrient dense than full grown vegetables. This is an onion right here. This is the gorgeous blossom that they produce and that will actually go to seed and explode one of these days and there'll be a million little, little baby onion seeds. Yeah, you can actually see it right here. This is overgrown. See the base of it right there. The city of St. George held several neighborhood open houses, inviting the public to share their input on what they'd like to see in their communities. We've, we've tried to pr protect some spaces and areas that residents have said, hey, these are the things that are important to us. So by virtue of when you say the city, it's the residents. That's who owns it. People that live here own it. They can use it. And uh, that's the whole idea behind it. Herbs and fruit are also among the bounty provided by this garden this year. Hancock is hoping that even more community gardens will be included in the future plans for the city as development of the area moves forward. In Little Valley, Melissa Anderson, Community Education News.